friend Jason is back. Get some more work done on his uh, first gen Jimmy Crawler. Let's get this thing put up on the lift. All right, guys, welcome back to You in a Garage. We are working on our friend Jason's uh, Truggy here, and we are installing the Rough Stuff Rear Brake Conversion Kit for the 14 volt. So this kit comes with two new rotors, brackets to mount these to the axle. He also upgraded to the Eldorado brake caliper so that he could keep his parking brake cable. It'll come with some brake lines to connect to your old uh, factory brake lines and he had to go get longer studs. We're also going to be installing this uh, Willwood adjustable brake proportioning valve so that we can dial in the amount of braking pressure. All right, well, let's get started. All right, once you've got the tires off the car, you need to go ahead and remove this axle here. We've got most of the bolts already out. This last one out. And then you take a screwdriver and just gently pry right here. A lot of these will have some sealant uh, you got to worry about. You're going to get a little bit of fluid on you. And then just go ahead and pull that axle out. For the next step, you need to bend uh, the little lock ring down. You can see that these ones are all open. This one right here, it's bent up, so you take a screwdriver, bend it down flat. There you go. Now you should be able to spin this nut right here. So they do make a socket that actually will fit perfectly into those grooves. Another option if you don't have one of those is taking a screwdriver and a hammer and just lightly tapping it. And you can see how easy that will come out, so we'll just go ahead and Spin that the whole way off. There it is, your lock ring and the nut. After you've pulled out the lock ring and the first nut, you can see back there is another nut just like the one before. This one doesn't have a lock ring on it, so uh, you should be able to just kind of spin it. Behind that second nut, there is some washers pulling this to get the washer a little bit forward see that and then it'll pop off and you can see it's keyed only goes in one way now i think we're ready to pull the drum i just know these are heavy so like i don't want to drop it on the floor there we go there it is that big bastard <laughs> <laughs> well, it also eliminates a hornet's nest. <laughs> oh, yeah. A little hornet's nest in there. A little bit more over there. Oh, yeah. All right, now we're going to uh, be removing the parking brake from the drum assembly here. So we've already taken out the two uh, bolts that hold it to the, uh, to the backing plate here. Now we're going to remove the cable from where it attaches here so that the rest of this can come off. So, set the brake, flat back. Almost got it. And there you go. Just like that. Now we can take uh, these four bolts out and the whole thing comes off without having to take apart the brake assembly. Oh yeah, one more thing. We need to disconnect the brake line. As so often happens when you're working on uh, old brake lines and stuff, uh, these brake line fittings are stripped out. So we're not gonna be able to pull them out of here, uh, the conventional way anyway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just cut the brake lines and we'll have to put new fittings on when we get that far. So let's get these brake lines cut. Yeah, it, it gets easier. You're like, oh, well that's easy. There we go. Okay. 
order to get the backing plate off, you just have to take off these four bolts. All right, make sure you keep track of these, uh, uh, these bolts and wa uh, lock washers because you're going to be reusing these to put the uh, brake caliper bracket on. Let's see if we can give this a little tappy tap. And there you go. All the drum brake components are off, so we can clean this up a little bit and start putting on our disc brakes. I just showed up to hit stuff. So we've got everything dismantled, the hub's cleaned up, now it's time to install this new rotor. These are front rotors from a GM three quarter ton, and these are gonna be pressed on with the, these new wheel studs to hold it onto the wheel hub, and then this whole thing will get mounted back on the axle. These are longer wheel studs, so when we're pressing them on, there's a little bit of balancing going on here, and we're gonna use a socket to support this side. We're gonna have a little spacer to help push it down, uh, push down on the stud here. But you gotta do all eight on each one. Watch. An air over hydraulic. It's so nice. The gorilla power works too. All right, there's one done. What I'm trying to do here is take these longer studs, um, they have longer thread here and a bigger shank, and this uh, knurling is able to go past the bottom of the rotor and clip it basically or grab into the hub here. So when that gets pressed in, this, is, this all becomes solid. The first Hub and rotor are done. Everything got pressed in. It's all nice there. So there's a couple different methods on how you can get these studs in. We just showed you the press. There's another method you see online where you take a hammer and a punch and punch them in. Um, we're gonna try that, see how that works on this next one. As Ryan mentioned before, another option is to use a punch and actually beat these down through the rotor. So we're going to try that and see how it turns out. So we've got it set up just like we did on the press with a socket down here, holding it all in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit those down. There it is. So if you don't have a press, go ahead and use a punch and a hammer and it'll work just the same. Now that we've got the spindle cleaned off, it's time to mount the bracket. As you can see right here, I want to point out this, the bend goes out towards the outside of the vehicle, okay? So you put it on just like this, and you can see it angles back just a little bit. You reuse the old hardware. We put a little bit of blue Loctite on there just to make sure that these don't ever back out. So we'll tighten it up. Uh, you'll notice I am going to do these by hand at first until they're nice and snug. There is a reason for this. I have learned my lesson many, many times. Even if you feel like you've got it started by hand, you can still cross thread things. Uh, as you start to tighten it, you'll hear a pop and that'll be it kind of jumping over a lip back there. And I don't want it going on crooked and actually damaging that lip. So we're going to tighten a little bit on each side until we get it to pop up over that lip. There you have it, there's that bracket. All right, you see we've got the uh, brake caliper mount all bolted on, ready to go. We haven't dismantled the hub from the seal and the bearings both sides, so they're ready to just slide on. They basically sit on just like that. Nice thing about this setup, and compared to the drums you'll notice, is once the caliper's on here, 
it's way lighter for one. We've actually lost about 40 pounds just by swapping out the drums for the, the rotors here. But it's also very serviceable. We get the caliper on and when you need to switch out pads, all you gotta do is pop the caliper off, change out pads, put it back on. So calipers that we've got, they come with the kit. These have a park brake mechanism to them, which is pretty cool. Not all of them come this way, so if that's what you're looking for, you can get it. It's time to reassemble the hub. So in order, washer, first nut. You don't want to forget that. Everybody remembers their first nut. All right. You get that tightened down in there, you want to tighten it to 50 foot-pounds. There we go. And we're going to back it off after spinning it a few times. Make sure we're good. And then tighten it back down. Then you put in your washer with the lock tabs on it. Here, Ryan. And the second nut goes on. All right, and we're gonna tighten this outer one up to 150. There we go. I might. Oh, good lord. <laughs> uh, if you have access to a gorilla, that helps a lot. Hey, Ryan, come give this a shot. There you go. There we go, 150 foot pounds. So these cutouts here, that's to make it easier for you to bend those tabs in. So you can see this tab lines up with the hole. So we're going to bend that one down right here. All right. And then we're going to go around and we're going to just bend all the tabs in a little bit just to make sure that they're not touching the outside hub. And there we go. We're ready to install the axle. All right, these axles uh, are actually in the axle housing wet. Gear oil is coming all the way out to here. So you want to make sure you seal this very well or you're going to be have gear oil leaking out all over your wheels and all over everything. So this is the steel gas that comes in there. We're going to put a little RTV on both sides of that so that hopefully that'll help seal it. Oops, that oh, crap it doesn't line up. No, oh, crap, we, tur we turned it. <laughs> turn the hub. The hub's not locked in anything, so you can turn your hub. Oh, right. You're stupid. <laughs> I'm just sitting here, I'm like, yeah, yeah, what I'm doing? <laughs> I don't know that it would have. <laughs> Those bolts connect the hub to the axle. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, so you can turn the hub to line up the holes. All right, now that we've got all the bolts in, we're going to go ahead and torque all this down to 115 foot pounds. Uh -oh. yeah. That one that's stripped. All right, we're getting ready to fix this uh, stripped out hole here. Um, but in order to keep uh, from getting a bunch of metal shavings in here, which would be real bad. I'm going to put a layer of grease all over here so that anything that might fall here will fall into the grease and we'll scoop that out, keep the inside clean. Now we just use a shop towel in here for another layer of protection. I try to go faster and then like ease into it. 
Yeah, yeah that's what I'm trying to do. Yep. Sharp ass bit. Yeah. yeah. There we go. I picked this up a while back and it's one of the best things I ever bought. That's funny. So many All right, now that we've got this drilled out and tapped for the helicoil, I'm going to put a little red Loctite on it to lock this helicoil in place. All right, we're gonna let this uh, Loctite set up before we put a bolt in, so we can still get the bolt in and out, and this will be ready to go. All right, we got all the, uh, the excess grease wiped out. That ended up being a really good idea because um, as I was pulling the grease out, I did feel some metal flakes in the grease. So grease is out, metal flakes are out. We're still all clean in here, so good call. You put these in, put them in nice and loosely, and then we'll torque them down. All right, let's get these things torqued. I'm going to torque these down to 115 foot pounds. Hold my hair. While we were getting the axles put back in, Ryan got to work welding up the tabs for the new brake lines. The kit comes with new brake hoses so you can remove the calipers. The brackets hold the hard lines in place and provide an attachment point for the brake hoses. On this uh, disc brake conversion, Jason opted to go with the Eldorado brakes that retain the parking brake cable right here, but these Eldorado brakes have a, uh, a reputation for not being very good. The parking brake just doesn't hold the way it should. So we're going to attempt to fix that. So what we'll do is we'll take this bracket that I made and we'll move this spring out of the way, slide the cable up and through there, put this flat with the axle and then pull this outer housing back as tight as we possibly can. And then we'll weld this into place. What that'll do is give this outer housing something to hold on to when you pull that cable rather than this going towards the brake. So that should make the brake function a lot better. We've got the disc brake conversion package all installed and got everything hooked up. Now it's time to adjust the calipers so these Eldorado brakes will actually engage the parking brake like they're supposed to. When you're uh, adjusting the, the inner bolt here, what you're doing is you're adjusting, you're turning it basically against the force uh, that this uh, arm would have. So you're turning it up this way, on the other on the other side, you're it's going the opposite direction. But basically, you're turning it up. So you put your wrench on the inner one in here, and you turn up this way, and you keep adjusting a little bit at a time until you get a spot where you can put this arm on, and then you turn it down just barely, and it engages. So it acts like it's on some sort of a lobe. I don't know exactly how it works, but you can just keep adjusting a little bit at a time until you find the right spot where it will barely go. You can go as many times around as you want, it appears. It just keeps moving it in and out, and you'll find that right spot. You go to move this down, and it hardly moves. That's the spot. That's where you want it to be. All right, as you can see, this has very little movement. And it locks the tire up good. All right, we'll get the spring book back in, hook the cable back up, and this thing will be done. Now that we got a uh, short line flared up and we got an adapter to match our master cylinder here. We can go ahead and put our new brake proportioning valve in. Okay, with the valve in place. Now we've just got to bend this tube over to match and hit that fitting here. With the proportioning valve all plumbed in, we just needed to build a bracket to come off the uh, booster here so that we can support it and keep this from vibrating. Make sure that... All 
All right, brackets on. We're ready to tighten up all the lines and get the system bled. See how these brakes do. easy to see everything. We just finished the rear disc brake conversion on our buddy Jason's Truggy here and uh, I think everything turned out pretty darn good. Honestly, the rough stuff kit was very complete. It had just about everything we needed. There were a couple things we had to add to the kit, but that was um, items that we chose to add, like the additional tabs that we made for the Eldorado brake calipers. The proportioning valve. We had to add the right. proportioning valve. The kit itself actually went in very easy, but as you probably know with anything with, related to brakes, it's all about bleeding, flaring lines, getting new lines, that kind of stuff is extremely time consuming. Um, we got it all done, it worked. Um, uh, we're really happy with the way the brakes are. We just we had it out testing it and uh, worked really well. I'm very satisfied. If my brakes felt that good, <laughs> I'd be pretty happy. So all in all, great kit, not too bad of an install. I would definitely do it again. All right, well, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching you in a garage. Be sure to subscribe. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs>